Okay, let's talk about something exciting for us to therapists. BiPAP, okay, why is it exciting? Because it's all us, okay? The doctor cannot really cannot write an order for this. They can't say put them on this based on this height like they can with a ventilator. They kind of just say, per RT, do what you do. I don't know what you do. Because we have to assess the patient. We have to be bedside of the patient, seeing what they're doing, and, and titrating to optimal levels, okay? So BiPAP, on the V60, you'll see it as ST, which stands for spontaneous timed, okay? And so what this does is we give them an intermediate mode for intubation because we want to ventilate them, but we don't necessarily want to intubate them. We want to try to rescue them. Okay, this is our patient who comes in, work of breathing issues, be it COPD, asthma, uh, CHF, fluid overload, things like that. So we can support them, get them diuresis, get them opened up, okay, and avoid intubation. Okay. Um, thing about BiPAP though, you have to, they have to agree to this. They have to be, you have to kind of talk them into it. So I'm just going and throw it on. I go, look, this is going to help you. I explain it's gonna be a little bit tight, and then I explain to them that they have to let the machine do the work, okay? Because the brain has to click over. You have to click over from negative pressure, which we're breathing right now, we're pulling air from the environment, to positive pressure, and your brain has to kind of click over, okay? And to click over, it has to kind of forget. So if you tell them to let the machine do the work, they kind of just breathe, and if they try to sync with it, it'll never happen. But if they just kind of forget about it, all of a sudden, they're doing positive pressure and then it's seamless, okay? And so how do we titrate it? Okay. We're gonna set an IPAP uh, and then an EPAP. The IPAP is the pressure that we're pushing in and the EPAP is kind of the peep that we're popping out open. And we wanna make the IPAP uh, ideally double what the EPAP is. And how do we know though? How much do we, do we know how to put? We don't just look at a patient and go, oh, he's 300 pounds, he's gonna need high pressures. I like to start over one low. I start them at kind of minimum 10 over five, see what they do. And based on their work of breathing, based on the lung sounds, based on heart rate, based on uh, sat, based on their work of breathing, I'll make adjustments from there, okay? I, in my head, I'll have a figure of 300, 400, but I'm not gonna be tied to that. I mean, it's whatever they could do. If a patient could only do, a six foot patient could only do 350 tidal volume, and he's breathing 18, I'm gonna let him do it, okay? If he's comfortable, he's moving air, okay? He's, his heart rate's gone down, He's moving here, I'm gonna let him do it. I'm not gonna have these numbers stuck in my head. I'm gonna kind of adjust. And then as he improves, that number will get bigger. The tidal volume will get bigger. If we get a gas and the CO2 is elevated, maybe I'll have to make some adjustments and I'm going to increase the pressure support. The IPAP minus the EPAP is called the pressure support. So we're gonna raise the pressure support. Um, if we want to adjust the oxygenation, we're gonna adjust the bottom number, the EPAP. But make sure when you adjust the EPAP, you kind of keep the same program. So we're gonna double so we'll, uh, CPAP of five, or uh, EPAP of five, and IPAP of 10. If you're gonna go up on the EPAP, make sure you go up on the IPAP too accordingly. Okay, kind of, kind of double it, kind of mirror it, okay? Um, but sometimes you don't need that much IPAP. Sometimes you don't need that much pressure support. You kind of just even it out. So it's kind of have to feel it, okay? The worst thing you could do is just jam a bunch of pressure in. Okay, because if they're fighting against that pressure, the epiglottis is fighting it and a lot of the air is going to the stomach. And that happens sometimes. Sometimes they get an x-ray, you have them on, you put them on 20 over eight because they're a big patient, and you want to ventilate them. You take the x-ray, they've got a big air pocket in their belly. Okay, you don't want to do that. You want them to fight this. You want to help them. You want to kind of assist them, okay? Plus, if this, if this is too strong, you put them in this big twin tunnel, the patient won't wear it anyways, okay? They're gonna end up intubated and it's gonna be worse for them. So you gotta get them comfortable. I say small tidal volumes if you need it, as long as they have a, as long as they have a good respiratory rate that's not above 30, and we get improved work of breathing, improved heart rate, improved SATs, okay, and titrate slowly, okay? You wanna use the lowest pressures possible uh, to get your, the proper optimization. And if you don't have a chance to put one on, wear one, see what it feels like, okay? See what it feels like to put too much pressure on, okay? And you'll be more sympathetic to it. But that's all I have for this. BiPAP, I love it, it's my favorite thing. Uh, it's all us. Make sure you talk your patient into it. Make sure you use low pressures just as much as you need.